everyone, Eloise here today for Lawn Font and today I'm going to be mass producing some cards and gift boxing them up using this gift box die. So for my card I'm going to be using the Winter Village and the Winter Scripty Words stamp set. I was going to pull in this little snow covered penguin from Snow Cool but it didn't really fit on my design of card so I decided to just leave it out. So to begin I'm going to be stamping out all of my images I'm going to need. Now I'm going to create four cards today um, so I'm going to be stamping out four of each image that I'm going to use. So I'm first stamping out this little church so I'm going to be stamping it out four times then I'm going to move on to the other houses and stamp those out four times each as well as well as like the lamp post and um, the one of the stars to fit on the top of the tree as well as the um, snow that will settle on a the top of one of the houses. So once I've stamped all those out, I did stamp those out using VersaFine Onyx Black Ink just because I wanted to clear heat emboss these images. So I'm going to be now pouring over some clear embossing powder and heat setting these images just because I want to watercolour and I prefer my watercolour to be a little bit more contained in the heat emboss. I just find that a little bit easier to work with. So now I'm going to be colouring up all of my images and this took a little while but I decided that I would use Zig Clean Colour Real Brush Markers because I find when I'm mass producing I prefer to colour with a watercolour because it doesn't require three colours you know per image to get a sort of gradient effect or an ombre effect with your coloring you know you can just use one marker and it looks like that you perhaps used three um, it's super easy I really love these markers for this I find them very quick to use and um, it definitely helps me when I want to color up a ton of images for um, creating lots of the same card I definitely prefer this over Copic um, markers or something like that I just find these very quick and very easy to do. So I'm first starting off with this number 41 light green and I'm just going to colour in my trees and so I've basically just started um, at the top of the tree and then like under eight underneath each layer and then I'm just pulling out the color with a water brush and also using a water brush is much easier as well because it's just a continuous flow of water and um, it just it sort of just makes coloring a lot easier you don't have to keep like dipping in your brush or things like that um, I just find it really easy and when I want to change to a new color um, I just wipe off my brush um, next to me on a paper towel or a cloth or something like that just to get it clean or if I have a bit too much build up of color um, I like to do that as well just to sort of get rid of that dark color and then I can really pull it out and it be nice and light and you get a really nice gradient look so I've sort of skipped over some of the coloring I haven't showed all of it just because there was a lot of coloring and it is literally just the same technique over and over again um, you definitely could pull in more than one color but that's I think going to um, increase sort of the time that you spend on coloring and really if you use these markers or any watercolors really um, you can pull that color out so far that you get such a great blend um, with the one color anyway so now I'm going to finish off coloring my houses and so you can sort of see that I'm going in a rainbow theme I did a pink house a red orange and yellow then I did the green trees then I'm doing a sort of like a turquoise color and then a like a blue and a purple and then I'm also going to be using sort of like a dark minty color um, aqua color maybe um, for the last house so again just repeating the same technique of scribbling down the marker where I want the area that will, that I want to be darkest and then I'm pulling out the color into the rest of the area to create that shading effect which I really love so I'm just finishing up my last house here and then I'm just going to show you all of the uh, colors of houses all together and it's listed at the bottom where um, what colors are used for which color of house in case you want to use the same colors as I did and then here I finished off the like the trunks of the trees and the um, 
roofs and the doors and the chimneys and things also I did the color of the windows yellow except for on the churches where I did them a really light blue and then I just used a light gray for the snow on top of the houses and things as well so now I'm going to be coordinate, using the coordinating dies to cut all of my images out. This also helps with mass producing and basically when I go and die cut all of my images I do as many as I can on one sheet and then I try and fit as many sheets into my die cut machine as possible so I can cut as many through one pass. So usually that would take me about four times to do that all um, but yeah it saves a lot of time if you try and put as many through in one time as possible. Now I'm using some hillside borders dies and I'm cutting down some pieces of white cardstock. So I just cut these down to three and one eighth inches wide by four and a half inches tall. And I did panel sizes this big because that's going to be my final panel size that I'm going to use in the end. And I wanted to be able to run through my uh, snowy hills just once with one die to get the two layers. So that's why I cut them down first then I've also cut down four more pieces of watercolor cardstock to the same size as the panels I did before and I'm going to ink blend on each of these pieces so I'm first using peacock feathers and so I just go on all four of the pieces first with peacock feathers and blend that in first once all of those four pieces are blended in I go ahead with my second color which in this case is salty ocean and I go over the top of that peacock feathers just ever so slightly to blend in with each other I really love blending distress inks on watercolor cardstock it's really easy doesn't take much time and effort at all and also while I'm blending in the salty ocean I do sometimes go back in with my peacock feathers blending tool just to blend those two colors together a little bit easier and then once I've finished with all of the salty ocean I go in with blueprint sketch which is going to be my very top top color for this panel and I just blend that in and again sometimes I go back in with the salty ocean blending tool depending on how it's blending and that's how all of these three colors look when they're all blended together it's really gorgeous this is probably one of my favorite trios um, to do skies with and things especially for winter cards it's super gorgeous and um, I just I honestly just love distress inks so so much so now that I'm finished ink blending all of these pieces on I only did the tops because the bottoms is going to be covered by the snowy hills and then I'm just going to flick some water droplets onto the backgrounds of these pieces and I just did that mainly just to add a little bit more interest to them these are very simple cards because when I'm mass producing I like to keep them very simple so adding little details like this onto them really helps just make them a lot more interesting and fun so once I've splattered onto the backgrounds I've picked up with a paper towel the extra excess water and now I'm going to dry them off with a heat tool and then I can sort of start assembling my cards together. So here is the snow banks that I die cut before out of the one piece of cardstock. So I've got a taller one for the back and a shorter one for the front. So for the back snow hill I'm going to adhere that down completely flat onto the panel and then for the smaller snow bank in the front I'm going to go ahead and adhere that down with some fun foam. I used fun foam since it was a lot easier to cut down and to pop up just this little piece instead of cutting all little bits of foam tape so I decided to do that and so once one's done I'm going to go through the rest of the other three and adhere these down the exact same way as well so again using flat adhesive for the back layer and foam tape for the front layer I also didn't want this card to be too bulky because obviously when you're sending Christmas cards you want to be able to send them as cheap as possible which means you don't want to have too much dimension on there so sort of keeping dimension to a minimum um, definitely helps so now that I have adhered all of my scenes together, I can adhere the images on top. So these are all of my images that I die cut out. So now I'm just arranging them in piles um, of the same image. And so then I can just grab one from each pile and adhere them down. So I'm just sorting them all out first. This definitely helps rather than just searching through a big bowl. And then I can start adhering. So once they are all 
divide it out into each of their like colors and different houses and things I'm going to do one card first when I have a lot of images I like to prepare and sort of organize my scene first on one card and then go out and do the rest of the cards so you can see here that I'm sort of organizing how I'm going to be adhering all of these like houses and things on like whether they're going to be adhered flat or have foam tape on the back of them just have foam tape on the top to support so they don't um, like cave in or anything like that so I do one card first add all my adhesive on the backs see if I like the scene or not and if I do like I really liked the way this scene looked here with all of the rainbow houses I can go ahead and do my other three cards so I first adhere all of the adhesive onto the backs of my images first so I go through and um, I put like flat adhesive on some dimensional adhesive on another so they have all got the adhesive on the back and so then when it comes to assembling my cards I can just quickly peel off the backers and hear them on in the exact same place because I already have an example and it just makes the process go a lot quicker so I'm just going to finish up and finish adding up all of the adhesive onto the backs of these and then I can go ahead and adhere all of my cards together so I went ahead and adhered all of my cards together this is how they all look when they are finished and now I need to work on my sentiment so I'm going to be using the winter big scripty words sentiment set now you could do several different sentiments from this set if you'd like I'm just keeping them all the same since this set of cards isn't going to be um, packaged together it's going to go one in each pack for co-workers so um, I'm using all of the same sentiment but if you did want to keep the same design of cards but change up all the sentiments so they're sort of different and you're including it all in one pack you could definitely do so so I just stamped the be merry sentiment onto some white cardstock with some jet black lawn fawn ink and then I used the coordinating dies to cut them out now I'm going to adhere down the be merry sentiment at the bottom of my panels so I just went ahead and used some Tombow mono multi glue and adhere them down at the bottom you can see that sort of like the tails of the sentiment are hanging over the panels a little bit but that's okay because this gift box accommodates four bar card sizes but it does leave a little bit of room so it's going to overhang just like maybe like a centimeter or so um, and it doesn't really matter they fit in there fine and sometimes a little bit of overhang on a card is sort of nice then I just adhered all of my panels down to my card bases. Those card bases are four bus card sizes and they measure nine and three quarter inches long and then I scored them at four and seven eighths of an inch and then they are three and a half inches wide. So those are my cards all completed ready to go in the gift box. Now I just need to make my gift box. So I'm using some perfectly plaid Christmas paper from last year. Super fun. I love this paper pad. I should have literally bought like 10 packs. This is my favorite Christmas paper of all time and now I'm going to create my gift box. So I'm just going to be going ahead and die cutting my gift box frame out of a piece of perfectly plaid paper and then an, I cut two pieces of perfectly plaid paper here but I'm going to replace one of the pieces with white since you're not going to really see the bottom of the box um, and I can use this other uh, top of this gift box for another box but just remember you will need two to create the gift box so I'm just going ahead and scoring on all of the lines first I'm scoring them all inwards like towards um, the bottom of the box since that's the way that the box needs to be folded and then once all of the score lines are folded I just added a square of score tape onto each of the flaps so I can adhere the boxes together. I already did the top and now I'm going to work on the bottom. So you can see here it is super duper easy to create. I love lawn fawn dies like this. They are so amazing. They're so well thought out and I just have a blast using all of these dies. I use them every year. All different types of um, like dies like this whether it's a little goodie bag or now they've brought out a gift box it's super fun so now that my gift box is all put together I just placed my cards inside and then I'm going to place the top over the bottom white piece and that creates the gift box super duper fun you could also add some tags in there or something like that if this was a set for somebody for Christmas that would be really fun as well
Now it's time to decorate the outside of the box. I did have to do this a couple of hours later since I had to go and do something. And so now it's time to decorate. So I just made the tag on the left using the large wreath dies and I just colored up some watercolor cardstock with some green distress ink. Then I cut out all of the different wreath pieces and adhered it all together on a circle, a white circle. I just used some Tombow Mono Multi Glue for that. Then I used the 4U dies and I cut that out of some chili pepper, red cardstock, added some foam adhesive on the back and adhered it into the center of my tag. Then I just used some brown lawn trimmings. Um, I'm not sure if this is still available, but any lawn trimmings will work. I just thought brown would sort of fit in well with the like whole wreath theme. And so I just went ahead and tied that around the box and tied that in a knot since I knew that the um, sort of tag centerpiece would cover that up. And now I'm just finishing off with a gold shimmer bow. So this bow comes in a large wreath set as well. And I thought that some gold would be nice to add in. So I have some gold shimmer paper here. This is super thin. I think it's from like American Crafts. But you could definitely create your own just squishing some Versamark ink onto a white piece of cardstock. Coating it in gold embossing powder or gold shimmer embossing powder. And then die cutting the pieces out. It would work just as well. I just had this paper and so I thought I would use it. So now I'm just going ahead and assembling the bow. This is super easy to do. Basically you just fold those loops inwards and adhere it down onto the base of the bow. Adhere that flap around and then adhere it onto the um, other pieces that come with the bow so it looks just like a real bow. It's super fun. So that finishes up my cards and my gift box tutorial for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed and learnt some tips for mass producing your cards. It's something I really love to do around the Christmas time since I do usually use these types of gifts for co-workers. So thanks so much for stopping by today. Remember this is part of the Forney holiday week so make sure you check over at the blog because there's going to be giveaways and things and I will catch you all next time. Thanks so much for watching.